I guess this would have been a good time to tell about my tell a joke to you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. tell them about my house concert tomorrow night in Barrington. Is it a house concert? Tomorrow night in Barrington. <laughs> I'll be there. You're Terry right. Everwine will be right there. Terry Everwine will be there. I kind of have to be. Yeah, she's, she's running the thing. <laughs> It'll be all him. I don't know. We might get you to do something. Maybe. However, I don't even want to think about it. Because then I'll be stressed all day tomorrow. So just no. surprise me while I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> So we start this. Um, thank you for sticking around. Uh, I wrote this um, actually about about this guy. Um, and, and thank you for still loving me. <laughs> <laughs> In the book that I don't have to sell, um, there's this uh, there's this little thing, and it's titled about my dad. I think. And, and it's just this tiny little chunk of uh, quotes, and, and it goes exactly like this. Um, hey, Dad, how do you spell Shudukabuff River? It says, how do you spell river? <laughs> R-I-B-E-R. -E all right, well, the rest is exactly like it sounds. <laughs> 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 and at six, I was like, okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> this is Portrait of King Gaines. A traced arc. The curved line through the air, protractor perfect, spider web thin and steel strong. The low sun caught the line in orange and slightly weighted in, tapped a ripple out of the still deep corner of the shallow river overhung by moss and shadows, the arch breaking against the surface of the water, a shockwave snake. It's a cold water dance, and despite the art, the final precision is a graceful weapon. Ken squinted like remembering. Tree seeds and cool evening bugs trailed wide in the last bits of day, the last cast. A bright reminder that it was almost time to head home. This part of the adventure was his favorite. A fish on the last line, fighting through final blood rays into a perfect twilight of cool purple skies. The fish in hand hanging from the line like a 1920s sepia trophy photograph could make the week. The tenseness in his knowledge of the long walk back, trying to mask it in the clockwork contractions of the line, making the fly bob the disappointment of a day over, mixed with the satisfaction of a day enjoyed and the decision to ignore the time spent, despite an untouched list of things to do sitting on the dash of the van. It all added to the familiar anxiety that comes with needing to go, but never wanting to leave. His legs are cold, solid from fighting the currents, come down cool mountains, his arms and face shifted, dark from sun direct to reflected off mirror water, weather drawn eyes, close to sleep, his stomach ached for the brown bag of now soggy peanut butter and jelly sandwiches left in his van this morning, alone in the passenger seat, like the name of old girlfriends that he reminded himself to remember, forgotten again. The fly twitched in the moving water, pulled along swifter currents and lost in ripples. Ken reeled it in, feeling the air, the water, one side of his face warm with the sun, the other river air, cool sensation. The best moment, even without a prize. Ken felt his life as it is intertwined with existence, but always mixed with the pull that brings him back at last light to the steel hum of his waiting van, his mechanical path, like a prayer, leading him back into the fold. Sunset on the river, water's all the glow. Been sitting on the bank all day, watching it flow. I got a line out in the channel, I stopped fishing long ago. 
I'm just setting sipping whiskey read so There's a gator on the surface, big old catfish in his mouth, as he takes it to the bottom floor. My heart is sinking south, drag me down where I don't want to go. Oh, how could she be so low? It's been a catfish morning, a catfish afternoon. Tonight there'll be a catfish moon. Catfish moon waltzing on the water. Catfish moon. Catfish morning, a catfish afternoon. Tonight there'll be a catfish moon. Chicago things, and uh, this guy Tim Stafford's doing it, and 
I heard about it, this guy named Billy Tuggle. And so I emailed Tim, I was like, you know, hey, I went in. <laughs> and he says, well, what do you want to write about? I said, I have no idea, I just moved here. I said, I really like um, the, the trains. I like the trains. And he said, uh, we'll write about your keys. I was like, who loves your keys? <laughs> so Wikipedia. Um, and started learning about this guy. And apparently he designed um, the L system. Um, he also designed the London Underground. And he, uh, he uh, founded Yerke's Observatory, which um, got him, uh, this, he did this like way back in the day. So because of that, they, they named a crater on the moon for him. And his crater, Yerke's crater, sits right on the edge of Mare Crisium, which is the Sea of Crisis, overlooking the Sea of Tranquility. And I was like, I don't even have to write anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it on paper. Yeah. <laughs> you forgot that he swindled the city of Chicago out of... Oh, in that, yes. Yeah, he, he, yeah. I, I kind of mentioned that as this, like, side thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is called Union Loop. Charles liked to look out windows, liked to own the things he saw. Chicago brimmed like the future, stockyards and exchanges, steel, art, more steel, and people, always people, moving. Charles liked to own those too, not the people, their movements. Charles Yerkes dreamed the moon on a sea of crisis, looking down to lines of brick and mortar, footfalls, horses and car horns leading to a forever horizon of smog and tranquility as if the city had paused to have its picture taken. To him it felt like drowning. A newspaper man once asked Charles how he came up with the idea of the Chicago Union Loop. He said he couldn't remember exactly. That consolidation was the key, that he wanted to see the city move and to be known as something besides a blackmailer a larcenist. 20 years prior, outside his small home, Charles cleans his windows, sees the beginnings of a spider web, its left side and owner missing, he leaves it there. Inside, looking out the window, he traces the unfinished spider lines in the dust and the single conjoining loop in the center. Now the right side of the web is missing, and in the distance, the lake. Today, he looks at his 30th story reflection, the city of Chicago blurring in the background, the endless writhing lines of people traveling across his face. Lost my soul, found my God with fishing pole. 
Lost my mama, lost my dad, lost my childhood home. Can you see it on my face? Actually, and I can't, you know, pretend this doesn't have something to do with the childhood class I took last semester. And so, like, some <laughs> of this shit just comes out of it, these childhood things. Uh, this is this is one of those. Um, and, uh, yeah. So this is called More Than Our Place. How we shared dinner across the table who liked us was still unscarred by childhood and military relocations. How it circled us in our places. Always some laughter, always some baby, always my excuses for trouble at school and the table who never held Tourette's against me. How we ate 30 ways of chicken and deep south vegetables, crumbs slipping between the wood slats all beneath the condemning gaze of thou shalt nots left behind by the holy grandparents hanging on the off yellow wall, keeping us in our place hanging next to dead Jesus who had his own problems. How the kitchen, retro before retro, was retro in olive greens and tans, held the yellow grease stained fridge, my paint finger paints magneted to it and beneath a giant calendar that always took too long to reach December's end. How my crayon drawings of wishes on the linoleum floors, the droning television at my back, the endless sweet tea, the food stamp milk, the apartment smell of pesticides or of cornbread sweet baking in the oven gave us the sense of everything in its place. How we were told everything and everyone on God's humble earth had their place and that this place should be good enough for any family how thankfully none of us ever believed in any of that. <laughs> The 
Cardinals are practicing their backhands on the grass court behind the soccer court. Jessica is watching from her window. She loves her room so. Jessica writes poetry by candlelight, touches herself in the dark. She knows she'll go to hell for it. But at 14, there are worse things than hell. The Archbishop's name once was Michael. He's a man who has made up his mind. At 61, he's given up his body and his soul to the sacred heart of Jesus. Sacred heart. Sacred heart. Even though the universe apart, each and every one a sacred heart. The Archbishop loses his footing. Red and red are flying as he falls. Jessica is laughing as she watches him tumble to the grass. Then he spies her at the window, touching her lips to the glass. Waves his beret in the air as it rises. Jessica waves back and smiles. Sacred heart, sacred heart. Even though we universe apart, each and every one a sacred heart. Bishop never knows the body of a woman or wonders why she bears his child. And Jessica will never know the body of Christ. Both of them will find their own way home. That is probably right. <laughs> that makes all the sense in the world. I think it's beautiful. It's um, beautiful, aren't we? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the army, I just know. <laughs> um, this is very little to do with that. Um, okay, so this is um, this is called Judas's trumpet. He stands in front of us all, and Maggie and me, and warns us. He'll bring us back, he says. His name is Judas, and he's been at this a while. Flipping high jazz trills on a bop ladder of lyrical lifts, and at first I didn't recognize my own faith. Up above, Jesus on the cross, swaying, swaying, kinda, dead lips mouthing. Was it worth it? 
We filled woodwind somber with the gusts of Golgotha, and Judas held a silver trumpet. He stood further back away from the group like embarrassment, but his notes pierced. When he exhaled, worlds changed. We spent years believing this Jesus. Man, he could do anything. But Judas, with one kiss, one kiss he held in the ethereal balance the life of a god but my god that trumpet and the way it clipped the whales and broke the yawns and the feast and the wind of those roman decadents with their spears under darkening skies crumbling walls around them like gabriel on a drunken stagger inventing a new sway maggie magdalene not understanding why I fought the urge to dance dance on this day of all days, as his head slumped against his shoulder, her lover, and she wanted to sob, she wanted to dance to his end, and that trumpet, Judas's trumpet, carried divinity back to divinity, while we stood in disgust and distrust, wanting him on that cross, wanting the roles of heaven changed, but he played like lust until his face sweat and the rain began and we felt like fools bracing against our robes while beneath our robes we tapped our feet. That trumpet blew to undiscovered smoke dives in a city called New York. Blew along rivers like hellhound guitar strings and empty bloody into a body of pine and water called by God the Mississippi Delta running the muddy leftovers of God's country down the beaches of Corpus Christi. Jesus died for you so Judas birthed the blues and in front of us that trumpet shamed us because we knew what Judas had paid and we believed in the power those notes had over the divine and our souls were lost in that music and yeah God help me but yeah it was worth it Well, the devil made me do it, made me write the song. Sat on my left shoulder, whispered all night long. Said I'm gonna get right to it, teach you right from wrong. You see me and God, we got a good thing going on. Well, the great big deal went down back before the big bang popped its top. <laughs> Every day was darkness, every night was night. And all the angels played in minor keys and the music never stopped. And everyone was cool and high and high. Meanwhile, God was dreaming of a brand new master plan. And got a brand new dance with a brand new I'm taking off, leaving you a charge down to my man. We signed a deed and she shook my hand. She hit a major chord on her guitar that rang just like a bell. Said, Let that be light. And the whole thing went to hell. And I get the minor
between the danger and the darkness and the safe and the sublime. Way back when you learned to swing and sing that minor nine, you got the devil in your music and your mind. Hit the road, Jack. You can't go back to singing in the house of the Lord with that wild and crazy music. They won't let you through that door. If you caught between the devil and the deep blue sea, you can save or lose your soul in any key. Guitar players? <laughs> yeah. But what you gotta do is just stay true to the darkness of the light. Find a brighter day. A darker night Cause it's all part of the damn grand plan This is your part There's heaven in the end And the devil in the end It's all part of the damn grand plan I get the night moves And I get the minor chords Everybody sing I get chocolate cake and the good boo <laughs> and the bad girls and I get the minor chords. shifts of moon and sea foaming and fog lifting and star falling black and visible boat boats ride and creaking low on the slush of the waves beneath the kelp damp air heavy with shadows what small sound a wave slap on water logged log a muffled nothing or a raised arm falling or quiet falling after was it a dragging crab scuttling shoreline turtles nesting in the secrets, but I could swear I heard a dragging or a foghorn way off a moaning foghorn, a few restless fish leaping into the touchable sky, the restless waves echoing in a splash, splashing slap background of something, thresher fish, dolphin fish, so many things from the ocean sometimes move to the land and then quiet again. Soft, barefoot footsteps silence into the hours, and I'm sure it was so little and nothing. Or was it a dragging? But for some or every reason, tonight I only walk away from the tick tock clockwork waves and the hiding invisible shore.
You notice I use different chords than most folk singers. Um, when I was a little kid, I used to want to be Frank Sinatra. And uh, I listened to my parents' records of Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra and, and uh, Lady Day. And, but I grew up in the folk, folk rock era. So it took me, I didn't learn all those damn chords. Uh, but I've been hanging around with my guitar player in Houston now, Wayne Wilkerson, I call it going to the Wayne Wilkerson Court of the Month School. And, uh, one day we were hanging around together and said, oh, I haven't showed you these Jovian chords. And we and um, I knew a couple of them. I knew it, but so, uh, you know, immediately you show me something new like that and I start working with it. I haven't written a Joe Beam song yet because I would like to write one that is in the ballpark quality of one note samba or uh, Girl from Ipanema. But I took those chords and folked them up, so this is what came up. Never quite got over Woodstock or November '63, and the things I learned at 21 put a big old hole in me. I never worried much about the bomb. Not a whole lot I could do. Never get over losing mom. And I'll never get over you. Never quite forget Lee Remix eyes. Maybe the rain must fall. And I'll never forget my baby's cries And the pain that caused them all I'll never stop wanting a lover's touch And all the things that lovers do Never stop having to feel so much Cause I'll never get over you Some say that nothing lasts forever I don't believe it's true Love's the one thing that we Disappear from view. We become the love we keep alive. After everything is through. So the only way I will survive is to never get over you. This old guitar and all the things it got me through. 
never stop in a wandering star. And I'll never get over you. No, I'll never get over you. for the girl in leather accents. She can speak in the accents of leather, well versed in the twirl of hip, the slap of thigh, the hardback binding of silk. Dream this little dream of me, her song pleads, but you've dreamed the scenario. Once for every day that ended, twice for every day you found with a half empty bottle of bourbon, and three times for every day it rained. The effects were cumulonimbus, whirlwind updrafts of lightning tip lust thunder, ripping like hearts from cold towers of suspended hail to spinning wall clouds bursting down, emotionally devastating anyone in your path. You burn for her like forest fires for Santa Ana winds. She asked so little. Yet you gave this soul like nothing you'd ever miss, washing down your own soot rivers, shoved ashen into the oily, abandoned gulf. This is how men are lost at sea. You've dreamed the scenario. Once for every day that began, twice for every empty tomorrow, you promised, and three times for every day it rained, you fell for her like rain falls for the dust absorbed completely in the parched soil leftovers of when push comes to love of those who could never measure up to the fantasy of her liquor lake lips the freedom of her care bear heart or the bondage of her velvet lined keyless handcuffed voice she's fluent in you and you're <laughs> listening nothing is little about this dream no matter how little she asks, she can speak in the accents of leather. And make no mistake, brother, she's speaking your language. <laughs> You shook my hand and showed your crooked smile But then you blew in like a ghost When I needed you the most You stuck around too damn long But that's your style Ain't that your style You know freedom is the devil's one and only friend You can leave him flat but he'll always take you back again and he leaves you with a lie that you will never die. So you hold the nail while he drives that bastard in and says with a grin. Flesh 
as you grip your soul so tight and as it tears your heart in half or you can hear that joker laugh curse the day that you walked out of the light in the dark of the night Just what you should. You learn that all your loss is gone for good. But you hang on to the rest, cause you know that you've been blessed with another day, another notch in the wood. And it's understood. of autonomy. Thank you, Bush, and the pe people we kept with him for teaching me the dangers of our two-party system. Thank you, boy bands, for teaching me it's not what you say, but how you move when you say it. <laughs> Thank you, credit cards, for teaching me how to truly be owned by the things I buy. Thank you, poets, for still trying to push the envelope and a world run by email. Thank you, War, for proving to me that no matter how bad I think it gets, it can always get worse. Thank you, Weezer, for doing that sweater song that until the day I die, I will always sing along with. Thank you, television, for teaching me the importance of a silent moment. Thank you, Matt Mongelia, for running the lights with sound. <laughs> thank you, Bo O'Reilly, for your inspiration and help getting this whole thing set up. And thank you, Prop Theater, and all our wonderful friends and family for coming out. Thank you. so dearly, some give it all away, something without reason or rhyme. And the hardest lesson I've learned in this life is how to get out of my way. Step into the moment, 
step into the plane. Let nothing take it away. Some sell themselves for money. Some sell themselves for love. Some give their lives to pleasure or some power from above. If my grandchildren wonder what I did with my life, say so did for some. Say I sold it for a Some sell themselves for money, some sell themselves for love, some give their lives to pleasure or some power from above. I don't know the answer to a single blessed thing. I don't know who we are, where we came from, or why. It just fills up the holes in my soul and I sing. I just keep on doing what I love till I die. Some sell themselves for money, some sell themselves for love, some give their lives to pleasure or some power from above. If my grandchildren wonder what I did with my life, I sold it for some. Say I sold it for song. If my grandchildren wonder what I did with my life, I sold it for song. Say I sold it.